Here I'm going to show you how to create the iModel fit for your data. So here in the Tools menu, you can click Find Pupil Locations, and this new window will pop up, and is going to be quite large because our images are big. Uh, this window is going to be uh, modified by the size of your data. As you can see, we have here uh, our eye images, and here is our search space. We're the first step is going to be to compute the minimum, the maximum, the average. What it does is just uh, goes through the frames, as you can see here, and calculates where are the darkest spots, the darkest pixels, the brightest pixels, and then it's going to do an average. This is going to help us to um, define our search space. Once this process is done, uh, you're going to be able to actually see them. So you can see here where the darkest pixels are. And this is going to tell us where all the people locations are as well. So here now I can uh, adjust my search space in order to encompass everything, a single uh, dark spot, which is uh, a, a pupil basically. So I'm going to increase the width and also the height of my search space in order to put them to put all the pupils inside of it. Now I'm going to see how am I doing with uh, my coordinate reflections. As, as you can see in this very grotesque image, um, you can see all these white spots which are different eye glares. These are probably all eye glares, just noise basically. And I'm pretty sure that this spot uh, right here is all they, they are all the uh, coordinate reflections in our data so as you can see they are also inside our search space and if I want to make sure I do the average of them and I can see how all or most of them are going to be here and also I can um, have I, I have actually all the pupils inside my search space as well once you have adjusted your search space, you can go ahead and use the other parts of the software. Here we have an optional gradient, which is basically if your data is too dark, you can actually uh, add more brightness to it. Our data, fortunately, is really good quality, so we won't, we have never been using this actually. Um, but it's there just in case you need to work with a really, really complicated data sets. The next step is setting up the thresholds. Uh, thresholds means that uh, what we're going to be considering dark as a pupil and bright as a corner reflection. So here you have these two sliders, one for the pupil and one for the corner reflection. And you can actually see uh, what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to select pupil in order to uh, see and tell the, the software how dark my pupils are going to be. Right now everything is dark and therefore the eye model actually fails. But if I start sliding this and moving this a little bit, you can see how uh, I can actually locate the pupil. And if I test this, you know, the frames, because at the beginning of the recording it's always uh, it's not good data. People are just looking away or uh, engaged in conversation with the with the experimenter. So a uh, more representative frame would be here in the middle. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the pupils are very, very clear and distinguishable. This is really good data. And now if we do the same for the corner reflections, uh, I can actually try to get it. Uh, here probably there's a lot of glare and I think that I'm going to add a little bit more white. There you go. Um, into it. And you can see that is pretty pretty obvious that this is doing a good job. Okay. And now if we see both we can see the image of the eye and we have set up our thresholds. Once we have our thresholds ready, we can 
uh, estimate the pupil locations, which is going to be using all both information from the search space and these thresholds in order to see where the pupil locations are. It's going to use estimated and write it down into this text file. So just click save. It's going to automatically put it inside the the project folder you indicated at the very beginning, uh, and it's going to go through each frame looking for actually the pupil locations. Once you're happy with your thresholds for your pupil and corner reflections and you have estimated your pupil locations, you can go ahead and click the eye model tab and uh, start estimating some parameters for your eye model. Here in this window you're going to have a list of all the parameters you have created um, and here you have all the um, settings that you can actually uh, modify for your parameters. Here you have your first slider that is going to be controlling the color of the pupil. Uh, you have the second slider that you control the color of the corner reflection. And the third slider is going to be controlling the color of the iris or the background, as we said here. Here you have uh, this little sharpening tool uh, which is very useful for data that needs some retouching. In this case, our data is pretty clean. We probably won't need the unsharpening tool, but I'm going to show you how to use it anyway. Here you have these three options. One of them is going to show you the model as it is right now. And you might expect, since everything is uh, gray here in these uh, colors for the people, the corner reflection in the background level, uh, you will see how our, our model does a pretty bad job. So as you can see, this is the, the model and it's not performing well at all. And that's fine because we haven't actually uh, given any cues. If you click here, the text people angle, the model gets a little bit better, but still uh, it's not even doing uh, the, the job. Uh, it's trying to catch some angle in the pupil. And finally, you can actually force the corner reflection to be a circle. And as you can see, that doesn't help either. So let's um, give it a hand to the model and go ahead and click here, the dropper. This dropper tool, you will be able to actually click on the image, choose a particular pixel, and uh, give that color of the pixel as a cue for these uh, parameter or you could use uh, the slider as you can see here with the slider it's a little bit more complicated because you have to guess how much dark or how much uh, light you would put here the dropper is way easier because uh, if you click here uh, if you arm it you can just go back to the image and click in one of the features so here uh, I'm interested in the pupil so I'm just going to click on the pupil and once I do that, automatically uh, the color of the pixel I, I selected becomes the color of the parameter here. Uh, and the slider is showing me where it is. And as you can see, our model became a lot better. So now if I actually do the same thing and arm the dropper button for the corner reflection and come here to the corner reflection and click it, yeah, it's a little bit worse but it might be because I'm forcing it to be a circle. So I'm going to unclick this and uh, it became a little bit better. Now let's do the most important one um, or one of the most important ones, which is the background. So we're going to say what is background and what is not. This time I will arm it as well and I'm just going to click here in the iris a little bit and you can see how our eye model actually is doing a pretty good job. Let's see how it does without detecting the pupil angle. It does a good job, but it still is leaving this area of pupil behind, and the corner reflection is not uh, very really captured. So I guess the detect pupil angle was actually improving. What if we actually try to do some sharpening on it? Here you have your radius and your chaperone sliders and let's add some radius and now let's put some sharpening and you can see how our image gets 
uh, a lot sharper and actually uh, our parameters actually might need to be changed a little bit that, and that actually is quite good so let's add that parameter and as you can see here the parameter went into the list of parameters and let's see uh, if I unclick uh, the dropper so I have now no button on here I can go and my cursor becomes this cross has so I can actually ask for for people location remember that we calculated people locations so I can uh, ask for a people location around the area that I'm going to be clicking so if I click here it's going to look for a pupil location that is around that area and you can see that our parameter does pretty well that's a pretty good job what about here down in the bottom for the pupil that's a pretty good job but for the corner reflection which is gone this is just some some glare it's not the corner reflection uh, so we don't care about it it's doing a decent job here it will need some help so let's do it I'm going to be giving that cue what about here and the background solve it basically I just like select pixels around here and that did a pretty pretty good job so I guess that I can add that parameter as well now I have two parameters and now I'm going to continue selecting some people locations uh, so you can give me different locations here here the the um, corner reflection actually is not working very well it might be uh, that is too bright maybe there you go let's try to use some other parameters at this time uh, I use the corner reflection is circle and now our corner reflection actually improve a lot I want to add that parameter as well so now if I browse real quick the movie uh, and on our frames you can see how our uh, parameters are actually doing quite a good job I can actually try to help a little bit more and and give just a little bit of more parameters there you go more position to my parameters and and just uh, getting really really good data you can advance uh, this thing with your with your mouse or you can use control uh, and one of the arrows to go uh, 100 frames ahead or 100 frames before and with the option one you can go uh, 10 so you, you will go advancing through 10 uh, frames as we can see the four parameters I just created are pretty good for our data or apparently they perform really well remember that uh, with expert eyes you don't need to actually come up with all your parameters right away because you can always go back and fix and rework your data that's one of the advantages of the offline uh, processing of your data. Now that you're happy with your parameters, you can just go ahead and run the eye model fit. So if you click that, um, you, you're going to be able to save this file in the same folder where we are saving everything. Um, it's going to uh, pop up this new window telling you that it's going to be putting all the output of this uh, process into the gaze folder uh, for the expert dyes tutorial videos um, it's going to ask you how many CPUs you want to use luckily we have 24 to use so it's going to be a pretty fast uh, process and this option of redoing completed frames is, a, is, is for the cases whenever you just go back and only redo certain and specific portions of the, your movie so that way you don't have to go ahead and redo everything for now we'll do we'll keep it there because we have no 
uh, gaze information we don't have any frames uh, processed so we have to do them all so if you click run um, you get you your your software is going to you're going to see how uh, it is going to go frame by frame performing this operation and that should take a couple of hours once the I model is completed you can just close here it will ask you to save you can save if you want and, and then you're done